Now we can begin. Okay. <laughs> and begin we shall. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. This is Ryan. Oh, sorry. I was on my phone. Did anything exciting happen this Bonske or anything? <laughs> uh, you no, know, just kind of your run of the mill. No, like complete uh, uh, precedent shattering, like <laughs> thing you would never believe would actually happen on a ba- Bonske happening. No, no, no major achievements good. for any podcasters or anything like that. Uh, I think uh, Ryan, the host of Grand Sumo Breakdown, I think he won his first guest, the Bonds K prediction after five years of uh, of attempting predictions. <laughs> and I believe he's also number one overall once again. And oh, good for him, I guess. <laughs> Where did this come from? What? <laughs> so weird. <laughs> A trophy for this exact feat. <laughs> yeah, I am once again. Best Bonds K guy sealed it with my first ever guess the Bonds K win on an absolutely ridiculous Bonds K. I don't know if I'm happy about it that or uh, if that makes me upset. I think I'm more happy that I'm I'm the one who won this absolutely ludicrous Bonds K. Yeah, I wonder if that do you would you consider it a greater achievement to have one that was easy to predict and you still beat everyone? Or does, is it a greater achievement to like be the best at harnessing the chaos? I think I've always said that I do better in predictions and like guess the bonds case standings when it's more unpredictable. And so oh, I think okay. it's pretty apropos that, like I said on the preview, this was fairly meat and potatoes bonds K up until my 13 where bomb just, just absolutely off yeah. went <laughs> off uh, and became unpredictable and unpredictable is kind of where I do pretty well. And that proved to be the case this time. Uh, and it led me to winning my first guess, the bonds K prediction. So very happy about that. And yeah, I, I do think it's appropriate for it to have happened on a bonds K like this. Uh, how many entrants were there this time? 206 <laughs> all right so yep that that that'll do it that's that's a appropriate that's a, that's good enough that yes i i don't really think there's any way i can tongue-in-cheek minimize that no nope. in, in good faith <laughs> all right so shall we dive into it and you'll know what happened when we get there everybody listening <laughs> yeah. and watching who who doesn't know what's coming <laughs> But as the world's most qualified person to explain this, Absolutely. why don't you Actually, walk us through? Be- before we dive in, I do want to give a quick shout out to another YouTube channel that does Bonds K predictions. That is Sumo Spiffy. Um, I was trying to find all the reaction to this Bonds K that I could yesterday when the Bonds K dropped because of bullshit that happened (laughs) uh and so i was watching sumo spiffy's video and he was he was calling out my not calling out he was mentioning my prediction and just like saying like hey ryan at gsb thought that this thing was gonna happen and then it did happen and uh so i appreciate the shout out sumo spiffy uh he's been doing uh sumo content on youtube for a little over two years so check out sumo spiffy if you're looking for other opinions on bonds k and other uh sumo related things so Give him definitely, a check out. Uh, definitely does a, a, a more thorough job with like video editing than we do. Oh, yeah. But not as good at predicting Bonds case. So, I mean, mm, nobody I is really. Nobody. So, <laughs> nobody. At least out of a sample of a couple hundred in the world. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> of course you will. And you should. I'll take what I can champion get. Champion. Yeah. King. <laughs> Ooh. I like it. All right. You did work really hard for this. I'm I'm gonna give it to you. <laughs> I've been I've been busting my ass on these Bonds K episodes <laughs> yeah, for like seriously. the past four years. Like I probably literally put more time into predicting the Bonds K than anybody else because I'm preparing <laughs> these like hour long two hour yeah, long you episodes. You have to do a book sur- report on every single yeah, one of them. <laughs> surrounding each Bonds K. So I better be the best at it if I'm putting that much work <laughs> yeah. into it. No kidding. Well, if you are watching this on YouTube, you can see up on our screen here, we have Ryan's prediction. And as we go through, obviously you can look up the Aki Bonds K, but But we're just going to be revealing it as we go so that we can talk about each rank. But um, Ryan, I know before we, before we started, you had a couple things you wanted to point out about what we learned. Uh, No, 
that's uh those are just my notes for the next bonds guy this is part of my note taking oh, process <laughs> i see i thought you were gonna go over like the way that these rules changed or something nope. i was just trying to keep us on the rails a little <laughs> yeah if, if we're not going to edit this out of the episode i have you can't. it's impossible a, i have a full page of notes just like about all of my rules that I kind of follow, like Sanyaku bias, joy bias. I've added in like rank swapping among yeah. Sekiwake's anti jurio bias and just kind of like tracked along how much were these rules followed this Bonds K uh, gotcha. so that I have easy access in the future when I want to go back and look like how were these rules followed. I can just take a look at this page and see. I uh, see what. So Happened. So you'll talk about them as we go, but you just put them here yeah. for like future Ryan to reference. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Just hadn't noticed you do that before. So it's work. been recent. It, it makes sense. I started doing it after I dropped out of number one and I had a couple <laughs> uh, and you I had a couple again. of like I had a 91st. I had like a 50 something placement. I'm like, got to I got to I got to redouble my efforts. I got to get back <laughs> back to the top. And so that was something get it back that I in did. Line. Yeah. Yep. And hey, you know what? fucking worked all right <laughs> yeah, <it> did <laughs> at right. the top of the bots of course we have our soul yokozuna tara no fuji on the east side he will be the only yokozuna for the third consecutive year down to ozeki we just have a couple of lonely ozeki this basha with koto zakura on the east side and hoshoryu on the west side for those watching along on youtube as jake is re revealing the bonds k if somebody does just has a white background it means that i perfectly predicted their placements if they have a green background it means that they landed higher than i predicted or a red background means they landed lower than i predicted and the darker shade green or red means the bigger it's a larger miss uh so a light shade of green would be slightly higher than expected a dark shade of green would be a lot higher than i expected right but it's going to be a lot of white for a while. Yes, it will. We'll travel down to the Sekiwake one rank. We're on the east side. We're going to have Abi. And on the west side, we are going to have Ono Sato. So this was the first sticking point on this Bonske. A lot of people wondering, all right, Ono Sato had more wins than Abi. Will Ono Sato jump ahead of Abi in this Bonske? And because of my rule of needing a Yusho or a June Yusho to swap ranks, with a fellow Sekiwake that you had more wins than um, I knew that that wasn't going to happen uh, because you have to have a Yusho or Jun Yusho in order to jump ahead of them. That's been sh very surprisingly, very consistent over the past few years. So I did not have them switch. And in fact, they did not. Um, we dropped down to the Sekiwake two rank where we have Kirishima remaining at Sekiwake two East. And then we have Takakesho joining him down there at Sekiwake two West. This is the first time Takakesho is going to be ranked Sekiwake since March of 2019, ending an over wow. five year stretch at the rank of Ozeki. So, uh, Still very, very weird seeing his name without an O next to it there. I yeah. don't like it and hope he I hope he can get his 10 wins because because yeah. like I've said, if he doesn't, I wonder if we've seen the last of Takake show. We'll talk about him plenty on the preview. Don't worry about that. But yeah, Absolutely. he has one chance to get his uh, rank back if he gets 10 wins. Yeah. And then at Komosubi, we had another chance for a potential rank swap where Hida Duumi went 10 and 5 from Komosubi West and Daisha went 8 and 7 from Komosubi East. Could they switch those two around like they do the Ozeki whenever they have uh whenever every Basho just to have them in order of most wins to least wins. But once again, they did not. Similar to Abi and Omos Onosato, they kept those two at their previous rank. So Daisha lands at Komosubi East and Hida Duumi lands at Komosubi West. All right, and then moving down to our zone of death at Maigashira 1. I'm just going to kind of rip through these fairly quickly because 
we're going to want to stop down on some of the more controversial decisions. So at Magashira 1 East, we have Takanosho, who rises up five ranks following a 12-3 and record from Magashira 6. So proving that, yes, of course, he was not going to force open a new Komosubi slot. And then at Magashira 1 West, we have Toby Zaru rising three ranks following a 9-6 and record from Magashira 4. At Magashira 2, we have Atami Fuji dropping just one rank to land at Magashira 2 East following a 7-8 and eight record for Magashira 1. And we have Oho rising up to his career-high rank of Magashira 2 West following a 9-6 and six record from Magashira 6. Then down at Maigashira 3, we have Mitake Yumi dropping just one rank from Maigashira 2 to Maigashira 3 East following a 7-8 and eight record. And we have Wakamoto Haru dropping one rank to Maigashira 3 West following a 6-9 and nine record from Maigashira 2. Um, I will point out on Wakamoto Haru, I don't have him as a luck of the bonds K candidate. Uh, those, the luck of the bonds K and snub of the bonds K candidacies are going to be filled by some very uh, special circumstances. So maybe <laughs> yeah. on another bonds K Wakamoto Haru could make it, but he did get a four and 11 record from Seki Wake to Bashogo, which you would normally expect to have a drop of seven ranks. And he dropped only uh, three to my Gashira two instead of my Gashira, I think it would be five. No, my Gashira six could have been the landing spot for Wakamoto Haru there. And then he had another six and nine Basho record, this Basho, which could have dropped him further three ranks to my Gashira nine. And he's only at my Gashira three. So he's had a very lucky couple of Bashos to drop as softly as he has. Yeah, no kidding. Then we'll move to Maigashira 4. On the east side, we have Shodai rising six ranks following a 10-5 and five record from Maigashira 10. And on the west side, we have Koto Shoho rising three ranks following an 8-7 and seven record from Maigashira 7. So for me, it's been perfect all the way up to this point, but the perfect streak did have to come to an end at some point, and Maigashira 5 East is where that perfect streak ends, as we are going to have Ura dropping just one rank to Maigashira 5 East following a 6-9 and nine record from Maigashira 4 West. So it's really just a drop of a half rank uh, from Maigashira 4 West to Maigashira 5 East. And I... I'm a little confused on to why Ura got this nice of treatment. Um, it's it's really just an issue of inconsistency on the Bonske committee parts from Bonske to Bonske, uh, which shouldn't surprise me whatsoever. Uh, because this Basho, we did see the return of Joy Bias in a much stronger form uh, than we had seen it in the past, which is very nice for Meisei and Gonoyama, who we will get to shortly. But Uro wasn't in the Joy. He was the 17th Rikshi on the Bonske, which would put him one spot outside of the joy. And then we take a look at Ura compared to Oho last Basho. So last Basho, Oho was ranked Maigashira 4 East. He was 16th out of 16 in the joy. So a little bit better than where Ura was at. And he also had a six and nine record. In my prediction, I predicted that Oho would get a little bit of joy bias and land at Maigashira 5 ahead of Takanosho and Shonana Umi, who otherwise deserved to go ahead of him based on the number of wins tiebreaker. Uh, but I had Oho go ahead of them due to what I perceived to be joy bias. I was wrong. The Bonske committee ranked Oho behind them at Maigashira 6. So I thought I would learn my lesson. I will do the same thing with Ura. But now the opposite has happened. Ura was ranked one spot below where Oho was at. I predicted he would get treated according to where the math would put him. But I'm guessing that due to him still fighting against five Sanyaku Rikshi, despite being outside of the joy, he got essentially treated like he had joy bias and went ahead of Wakataka Kage and Chura no Umi, who uh, both beat Ura in the East over West tiebreaker and the number of wins tiebreaker. So Ura definitely getting some preferential treatment. I'm guessing based on the fact that he fought five Sanyaku Rikshi. Yeah, I, I was going to bring the same thing up. I wanted to check like, even being outside the joy, he had most of the hard matches. He had Terano Fuji. He had all three Ozeki. He had one Sekiwake. 
So yeah, it, it ha it, I'm sure it has something to do with that. Like there's, there's no reason for him to get any sort of bias yeah. except for the fact that his record more so than his rank, uh, put him up against those guys. But you know what? It really doesn't matter because the Basho before when Oho didn't get any preferential treatment, he also fought five Sanyaku Rikshi. So, oh, damn it. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. So it doesn't make it. Yeah. Yeah. Then we get confirmed plot hole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we'll get there. <laughs> I'm sure it's the last one on this Bonske. <laughs> so let's move on to Maigashira 5 West, where we have Shonan Noumi. Now, him going ahead of Wakataka Kage in Shura Noumi and keeping his rank after a 7 and 8 record is not a shock. He deserved to go ahead of both of those two. Um, and honestly, based on what happens later on in the Bonske, surprised they didn't promote him. <laughs> oh boy. Right. I, I I know the very basic gist of what the bombshell is that we're going at, but I I purposely didn't read into it too much. So I'm, I'm the, the anticipation's killing me here, yep. what we're what we're really talking about. And you know what the fun part is? It happens right where I said the bomb was gonna go off. And God, <laughs> I didn't know how right I was gonna be. <laughs> it, it it was just a slightly different bomb than you were expecting, but you knew exactly where it was going to hit. Yeah. Okay. But we're not there yet. My Gashira six. Hey, Joy Bias <laughs> is back, baby. So Joy Bias wasn't done slapping Wakataka Kage and Chuda Umi in the faceless Basho. As it turns out, I was right to have that sneaking suspicion that Meisei and Gonoyama could go ahead of those two. You remember back to the preview, I kept talking about, man, there's this part in the back of my head that really wants to put Meisei and Gonoyama ahead of Wakataka Kage and Chura no Umi, but I held faithful to the math as the Bonske committee had been doing so much in recent history, even with the Joy Rikshi, so I didn't pull the trigger on it, uh, and that ended up costing me in my prediction as Meisei drops five ranks to Maigashira 6 East following a 4 and 11 record for Maigashira 1 and Gonoyama drops 3 ranks to Maigashira 6 West following a 5 and 10 record from Maigashira 3. And uh I have a little pet theory as to why Ura also got preferential treatment uh and that is because it wouldn't have made a whole lot of sense for Ura to end up behind Gonoyama just based on their proximity on the previous Basho. Uh, because Ura had a six and nine record for Maigashira four West, and Gonoyama had a five and ten record for Maigashira three West. So when you have like those Rikshi stacked on top of each other on the Bonds K, and the higher ranked one has less less wins, and the lower ranked one has one more win on the next Basho, you would always expect the one that was previously lower ranked, in this case Ura, to be ahead of the one that was previously higher ranked. And so my guess okay. is they they didn't want to ignore that kind of relationship that Ura and Gono Yama had. And so they like, my theory is that they decided, all right, we're going to, we're going to give Meisei and Gono Yama. We're going to be lenient. We're going to put them ahead of Wakataka Kage and Shura Naumi. But then like, after they had worked all that out, then they noticed that, Oh, it doesn't make sense for Ura to be behind Gono Yama. So let's just slap Ura here and hope nobody notices. <laughs> I'm sure that was exactly like the the tone and gesture that they were using. <laughs> hey, it lines up with a lot of your thoughts on how the Bonds case get created. It's just like, uh, oh, what did let's we do? do uh, let's just do that guy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll pretend it's I don't know, joy bias or something. Yeah, something like that. But he's sick. He's 17th. He, he's not in the joy. Don't worry about it. Nobody's paying that close of attention. <laughs> certainly, certainly nobody's spending hours analyzing our decisions and predicting them for next time. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move down to my Gashir seven. We'll, we'll, we're going to finish off this area of the Bonske that I whiffed on, and we're going to have Wakataka Kage finally landing on the Bonske. First is Wakataka Kage rising seven ranks to my Gashira seven East following an 11 and four record from my Gashira 14. I do have him as a snub of the Bonske candidate as he was uh, put behind a couple of Rikshi that deserved to be uh, behind him. Uh, which is something that we haven't seen in recent Bonds case. So the fact that it's coming back to rear its head now at the expense of Wakataka Kage, going to make him a snub of the Bonds K candidate. Sure. Um, 
And then at Maegashira 7 West, we have Truda Naomi rising five ranks to his career high rank of Maegashira 7 West, following a 10 and 5 record from Maegashira 12. Not making Truda Naomi a snub of the Bonds K candidate just because his rank was affected by one spot, whereas Wakataka Kage was affected by two spots for my prediction. So any way you cut it, Wakataka Kage would have been snubbed more than Truda Naomi. So there's no point making Truda Naomi a uh, snub of the Bonds K candidate. He would always have been. Uh, snubbed a little less than Wakataka Kage. Sure. So then we get to Maegashira 8, and this was a spot that I was weirdly concerned about on the Bonds K preview. Um, but it ended up how it should have in the end with Endo rising six ranks to Maegashira 8 East following a 10-5 and five record for Maegashira 14, and Midori Fuji rising two ranks to Maegashira 8 West following an 8-7 and seven record for Maegashira 12. So once again, it's just another case of Bonske inconsistency from one Basho to another, uh, as in a very similar spot with two Rikshi with the exact same records in the previous Basho, the tiebreaker went the other way, and instead of the Rikshi with more wins going ahead, it was the Rikshi that previously was ranked higher going ahead. So this situation, a very similar situation last time, but handled differently. So just Bonske to Bonske inconsistency. So you're saying that, um, you're, you, so you're saying if you see something that seems really weird and out of place, don't immediately make a new rule based on it because yes. it might just, it might just be that an exception. A exactly. Yeah. Like, like I, I, I said on the preview, I the reason I didn't jump the gun and like switch the order of these two is because I'm not going to change how I predict Bond's case based on one Basho. There's always sure. some weird thing happening within a Basho that goes against all previous precedent. And then the next Basho, it reverts back to how it's always been. Uh, and so don't overreact to stuff like this. It, it's just the Bonds K committee making sure nobody gets a perfect guess. It's got to be at this point. It really <laughs> does. <laughs> All right. We're going to move down to our double digit Maegashira. And first off, we are going to have Tamawashi at Maegashira 10 East. I think we skipped drop nine. I sure did skip nine. We're going to drop down to Maegashira nine. We're on the east side. We're going to have Ichi Yamamoto rising two ranks following an eight and seven record for Maegashira 11 and Oshoma dropping a half rank from Maegashira nine east to Maegashira nine west following a seven and eight record. Now we will get to our double digit Maegashira where we have Tamawashi dropping one rank to land at Maegashira 10 east following a seven and eight record. Uh, Jake, you have uh, some stats about Tamawashi and some of his longevity records he is shooting for. Yeah, got a got a text from Goose of the Sunday Morning Sumo Show. Check out that YouTube channel. Uh, they do English language commentary uh, live during uh, during every. I'm pretty sure they they do every night of the Basho now. Uh, well, day for them because Goose is in Australia. Okay, uh, slightly say, more. That's got to be. Awful yeah. for your sleep habits. Slightly more convenient time zone to be in. But no, um, Goose wanted to uh, point out to us Tamawashi's longevity. He's about to hit some milestones. Uh, on day two, he will tie uh, Aobajo. That's that's a clumsy one to say. Should have tried mm -hmm. saying it out loud a few times before I just read it. <laughs> um, but uh, Aobajo, I felt a little bit better. Um, was a uh, Sekiwake in like the 70s and 80s. He was another Iron Man, never missed a single match in his career, which is the same as Tamawashi because those, according to the official sumo record books, when he was disqualified for COVID, they did not count that against him. Yep. Um, but he will, on day two of this Basho, Tamawashi will tie for uh, most total and most consecutive bouts. Excuse me. Uh, he will tie Aobaju for both of these records because, again, they neither of them ever missed a match. Um, he'll tie him for total uh, bouts and consecutive bouts. The consecutive bouts thing, though, that's like an outright record. Um, so on day two, he will be tied for eighth in all-time total bouts and tied for first in consecutive bouts, meaning that on day three, he will pass, have the record for consecutive bouts all to himself, uh, and then move into eighth on his own for total bouts in a career. Okay. Um, so keep an eye on that. 
that is the only milestone for him of this particular record in this Basho. He needs to go uh, roughly a, another whole year, and then he would get bumped up to around sixth. If he stays in for two more years, he'll go up to like fourth or so most bouts all time. Uh, it wasn't positive on the math, but roughly two years to get there. To get the all-time record for most bouts, though, he will have to go almost exactly three full years from right now. Um, so you can do, uh, if he stays in the top division, uh, or if he stays in the top two divisions, he'll get 15 bouts per Basho, uh, which is 90 bouts a year. And he's roughly 270-ish bouts away from first place, so Jeez. about three years. Yeah, and that would put him at 42 years old when he mm -hmm. achieved that record. So He's going to turn 40 in uh, during the Aki Basho, or uh, uh, Kyushu Basho. Yeah, Kyushu. Uh, November. So yeah, just wanted to point that out. Shout out Goose. Uh, check out their, their streams. Uh, and yeah, thank you for pointing that out. That is going to be a huge milestone. Um, I want to make a note on our preview episode to mention it too, but I wanted to put it here so I didn't forget about it. Yeah, absolutely. And then joining Tamawashi at Maegashira 10 on the west side, we have Roga rising five ranks to his career high rank following a nine and six record from Maegashira 15. Dropping down to Maegashira 11, we have Sada Naumi dropping four ranks following a five and 10 record from Maegashira 7. And at Maegashira 11 West, we have Kagayaki rising five ranks following a nine and six record from Maegashira 16. Then at Maegashira 12, we have Bushozan rising four ranks to his career high rank, following an eight and seven record from Maegashira 16. And we have Keen Bozon dropping four ranks to Maegashira 12 West, uh, following a four and 11 record from Maegashira 8. So I had said on the preview that um, in one of the cases of a tie between a double digit Maegashira, that's rising up the Bonske and a single digit Maegashira dropping down the Bonske. Uh, that's going to be the cases of Endo versus Midori Fuji, Sadano Umi versus Kageyaki, and Bushozan versus Kimbozan. I had thought in one of those, the Bonske committee was going to ignore the typical tiebreaker rules to put the Rikshi with fewer wins ahead of the Rikshi with higher wins, because that was kind of a little bit of the trend we saw last time. I didn't think they were going to go all the way and do it with all three of them, but I thought they might sneak one in there just to throw it everybody off but to their credit they they followed the typical bonds k tiebreakers they they behaved uh in all three of those scenarios and that makes me feel a whole lot better than i did during the preview trying to yeah. guess all these spots kind of kind of confirms that it is for sure a rule yep it's not just something that happens to be you know guessing the coin flip the most times or something all right here we are. It is Maegashira 13. <laughs> do we do we need to stretch first or something? Or what, uh... <laughs> no, I, I I've I've done a lot of processing on this, Jake. Um, <laughs> so like I said, this is this is the part of the Bonscape where I said a bomb would go off and that anything could happen. On my prediction, I had Ono Katsu landing at Maegashira 13 East. Despite him being a Jurio Rikshi, he deserved to be ranked next. And the Rikshi in the top three Jurio ranks have been treated pretty well recently, honestly. So I figured with him deserving to be one rank ahead of everybody else, he could easily land here. But the Bonds Cake Committee decided they didn't want to overpromote the Jurio Rikshi. That's fine. Whatever. They they must have decided to plug this hole with Takayasu. He was dropping down from the Joy. It makes sense. This is a typical spot where you might have a falling Joy Rikshi plug in a hole. Uh, mm -hmm. But it wasn't Takayasu. Well, then it would have to be Nishkigi. It would be a soft demotion of just two ranks for a five and ten record, but we've seen worse, honestly. And besides, if it wasn't Onokatsu or Takayasu, then Nishkigi is the only real option here since Hokuto Fuji went six and nine from the spot we are trying to fill. No one in their right mind would keep a six and nine Rikshi at their previous rank for no reason whatsoever. That would be dumb. That would throw 60 years of Bonske precedent out the window. There is no reason to even bring it up as a possibility, as it is quite frankly laughable to even consider. Jake, why don't you reveal the Magashira 13 East Rikshi? Oh my, it's it, Hokuto Fuji. It is Hokuto Fuji. Who and he is would have dropping... gotten away with it too if it weren't for us meddling Bonske nerds. <laughs> he is dropping 
zero ranks, nothing, nada, zilch after a six and nine record and keeps his previous rank of my 13 East. How did this even happen? (laughs) I, I can't, I can't be sure what the bonds K committee was thinking as I am well versed in making bonds K's while whoever put this together was clearly a toddler, but for whatever (laughs) reason, they decided that you can't over promote a Jurio Rikshi by two ranks. They just made that choice. (laughs) That's just the choice that they made. And then if, if that is the choice that you made, then you only have to listen to my thoughts from the Aki Bonske preview for an explanation of how Hokuto Fuji landed here. What a coincidence, Ryan. I have that clip ready. Ooh. Should we put in like a sound effect, like a little Wayne's Road, like doodly doo, doodly doo, doodly doo? If you want to put the work in, I'm not going to. Here's the clip. Okay. <laughs> By the math, Hokuto Fuji deserves to go next. And so many times we've seen this Bonske committee, even in unsavory situations the rickshi that deserves to go next by the math is the one that goes so how did that pan out well that was me talking about hokuto fuji only dropping a half rank from my 13 east to my 13 west which is what i predicted and that was the unsavory situation i thought we were in <laughs> yeah never <laughs> once would i have considered that the unsavory position we would be in is leaving a six and nine Rikshi in their previous spot. I did not know that the Bonske committee was this beholden to the math that mm-hmm. they would do something that hasn't been done without extreme circumstances right. surrounding it. it. Hasn't been done since the 1960s. Like we've <laughs> evolved as a uh, culture as a race of people since then. And you go back to 1960 bonds cave placements to leave Hokuto Fuji at fricking my 13 East. When that's where he was last time after a six and nine record, we didn't have any expansion or shrinkage of the no. Yaku ranks. So it's not like, Oh, well he's actually like 33rd in the standings this time, as opposed to 32nd last time. No, he's the exact same spot in the order. He was last time. There's no, no reason for this. Onokatsu deserved to be ahead of him. Nishiki deserved the same rank as him. Even if Nishiki lost the East West tiebreaker, like it, it doesn't matter. Well, actually, you know what? Obviously, you always have to respect the East West tiebreaker because it's it's not like on the previous Bonske. We had a case where a West Rikshi went ahead of an East Rikshi in the double digit Maigashira ranks. For no reason. And so now when you have a very, 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 very good reason to ignore East-West tiebreaker, you obviously can't do it now. Of course not. It's just ridiculous. But this this is still a solution that should never have been considered. And for that reason, let's send it back to past Ryan one more time uh, to discuss why we demoted Mitake Yumi on this Bonds K. Doodly doo, doodly doo, doodly doo. <laughs> I don't think joy bias is going to be enough to keep him at his current rank when another Rikshi is equally deserving of taking that rank. I think they're going to want to make sure that Mitake Yumi sees a little bit of a demotion following his 7-8 and eight record since there is another Rikshi that is just as deserving to take that rank that he is currently occupying. So I don't, I don't think they're just going to leave him there. And they just left Okuno Fuji there when there's another <laughs> Rikshi that was just as deserving to take his rank. Like, me God, this is going to haunt you. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm going to completely disregard this. This will never happen again while I predict Bond's case. I am not worried about this setting new precedent whatsoever. It, I'm I, just so mad that it happened, though. I This is the thing where I'm going to be like, for the rest of time, though, oh, when it's you like, you are going to make think? me hate this. Yeah, Jake, what do you think I got wrong? Every single time for the rest of our lives, I can just go. Do you remember that time with Hokuto Fuji? And I'll just send you spiraling into another rant when yeah. you thought that you had buried it. <laughs> so so the reason I brought up the Mitake Yumi demotion is especially because I hap- just happened to say they're not just going to leave him there, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. which I think is very apropos. Um, but Mitake Yumi had a seven and eight record and he had like joy bias on his side. So they very well could have kept Mitake Yumi at Magashir 2 East or Magashir 2 West ahead of Oho. But 
in order to recognize the fact that Mitakeyumi had a losing record, they demoted him and put Oho ahead of him. Even in other circumstances, Mitakeyumi might have ended up ahead of Oho. And that's and they did that with a 7 and 8 record. And now when we're looking at a 6 and 9 record, an even worse record, we have Hokuto Fuji sitting there. We have Nishigi, who also deserves to be the same rank as Hokuto Fuji. He just happened to be on the west side instead of the east side. I don't understand why they couldn't flip those two. I don't understand why we're just ignoring Ono Katsu for this rank. It it, <laughs> it makes no sense. There were plenty of other options to fill this spot besides leaving Hokuto Fuji here. It It's absolutely absurd, and I hope they got yelled at by somebody. That is more <laughs> well, than... Sounds like they just did. <laughs> more than, like... Bonds K nerds that are sure. upset for this. I hope their <laughs> bosses yelled at them for this yeah. very heartily. And I, I hope they all get demoted and we have a brand. No, I don't want a brand new Bonds K committee. Cause I would just, I'd have to learn their whole preferences and everything. I don't want to have more adjustment and time. Ryan's real priorities come out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I don't, I don't want to get rid of the chaos just to learn new chaos. I already right. kind of know this chaos. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's a lot of me being upset for missing somebody by a half rank. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyways, I was I was half a rank off on him. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's let's keep moving. So oh. we get to Maigashir 13 West. And Onokatsu is gonna continue to get the shaft for a couple of more ranks. So for some reason, Nishkigi drops just two ranks to Maigashira 13 West, following a five and ten record from Maigashira eleven. Then we get to Maigashira 14, and we have Ryuden landing at Maigashira 14 East. He deserved to be two ranks lower than Onokatsu, but he still goes ahead of him for, once again, reasons. Uh, and he is dropping <laughs> six ranks following a 3-12 and 12 record from Maigashira 8. And I will also point out for Ryuden, Maigashira 14 East is the highest ranking for a Maigashira 8 Rikshi with only three wins since 1949. Also, this Just rank and record get combo. Get ahead of that Jurio guy, I guess. Yeah, this rank and record combo could easily have dropped Ryuden to Jurio on another Bonske, but no, this guy needs to go ahead of our Jurio one Rikshi that deserves to be two ranks higher than him. We needed, of course. To, we needed to do this guy a historic favor <laughs> to put him ahead of a Jurio Rikshi that deserved to be two ranks higher than him. So, does that mean a luck of the Bonske candidacy for him or anything? Uh, no, Hokuto Fuji gets that. Oh yeah, duh. Okay, yeah, nobody You're else not even compares. bothering to nominate anyone. Got yeah, it. it's it's Hokuto Fuji, <laughs> forever and always. Yeah. So, Maigashira fourteen West. Now we do finally get to Ono Katsu, uh, rising up four ranks following a nine and six record from Juria One. Needless to say, a snub of the Bonske candidate. <laughs> that is needless to say. Mm -hmm. Also, ultimately. I had the four Rikshi right for the Maigashira 13 and 14 ranks. I had all the names right. I just had assumed Onokatsu would go ahead of the other three. If that had happened instead of the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life, then I would have <laughs> nailed all of these ranks. I love how, yeah, you you just slightly shuffled the order of four guys that you have in the right two slots, uh, or four guys in the right four slots. They're slightly shuffled, and you have two and a half pages of notes and for the first time ever, <laughs> cut clips from prior episodes <laughs> just to explain why it's such a dumb decision. Yeah. But that's okay. We're we're going to go ahead and get back to things that make sense to me as we have <laughs> oh, Ta Takayasu dropping 12 ranks to Maigashira 15 East following an 0-15 record from Maigashira 3. The Bonske committee continues to show that Rikshi that do not participate are not going to get any favors in the Bonske, no matter if they were in the joy, no matter if they're in the Sanyaku. As despite being in the joy this past Basho, Takeyasu received absolutely no joy bias, uh, not even to stop the Bonske committee from keeping a six and nine Rikshi at his previous rank. <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely do have to give you props for nailing an 0 15 drop like that. I felt um, good about that one. Yeah. Uh, but, I feel like but I had still. him lower than most everybody else. I think a lot of people had him going, like some people had him going at Maigashira 13 East, where Hokuto Fuji went ahead of Onokatsu. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Fuji, I mean, this... but he got a six and nine. 
<laughs> of course he stayed at his previous rank. But but no, I just this... mean like the the bigger the rise or fall, the the higher the difficulty to to bullseye mm-hmm. it. So pretty cool to yeah. see that. Yeah, I feel like I'm I'm finding a lot of recent cases that are similar to this, and I'm kind of locking in on what they've been doing. And me saying this, they're gonna switch it all around the next time that it happens. <laughs> of course. Uh, but then at Maegashir at 15 West, we have Takeda Fuji dropping two ranks following a 5-10 and 10 record from Maegashira 13. Then at Maegashira 16 on the east side, we have Shiro Kuma making his Makuuchi debut. He's rising nine ranks following a 12-3 and three Jurio Yusho from Jurio 8. I Once again, I kind of feel like I was the only one that saw this coming based on all of the predictions that I saw before the Bonds K was released. The anti jurio bias is very real for Rikshi coming from deep jurio. Um, and like in large part, me getting Takeyasu and Shido Kuma right, this is why I won Guess the Bonske this time. Sure. Um, just being able to navigate through the unpredictability below, below my Gashira 13. This is the reason that I won Guess the Bonske this time. Yeah. And, and Shiro Kuma was the one where I got plenty of grief for in our recap episode i think yep. it's just like a throwaway comment i'm like yeah i don't think he'll get all the way up and, and then everybody who knows anything about Bosque is like did in our idiot. discord like oh my you god why is, why is he even on the show anymore something like that <laughs> what's know. wrong with you I, two ranks low or two slots lower and or i guess it would be three slots lower and i would have been right which is <laughs> well within the realm of guessing for a jurio promotee <laughs> I refuse you, to feel bad about that one. Uh, continue, you, Ryan. You tarnished our good name like that. <laughs> uh, by Gashira 16 West, we have Kita Nowaka rising four ranks following an eight and seven record from Jurio three. Uh, I mean, I guess the Bonds Gate committee can over promote Kita Nowaka by three ranks following an eight and seven record, but they couldn't be bothered to over promote Onokatsu by two ranks to avoid something that is incredibly stupid. I'm sure. Uh... I'm sure you are completely right that you will not let this haunt you. I'm just going to hammer say it home this haunted. episode. I'm going to hammer it home this episode. It'll 100% be brought. It's going to be brought up again, like on every single Bonds case, like mm-hmm. in the back of my head, like six and nine. Who knows? This is, it's Yeah, it's the Bonds K equivalent of Toku Shoryu winning that one you show after a career of like second yeah. division mediocrity. Yep. And and it's like, well, what about that one time though? You never know. And yep. you, ugh, oh, yep. <laughs> and then at Maigashira 17 East. <laughs> <laughs> I see that we still have three pages to go in our outline. <laughs> fucking Nishiki Fuji. Oh my fucking god. What the <laughs> fuck? What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Somehow. After going six and nine from the lowest rung in the Makuuchi division, Nishiki Fuji is able to keep his previous rank and stay in the top division at Maegashira 17 East. How is this the solution you come up with for your Bonske? How do you do something like this? After after they've done this, like like I said, I wouldn't be shocked if we're promoting a seven and eight Rikshi within the year. Like <laughs> if 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 the math told the Bonds K committee to do it just to fuck over some poor Jury or Richie, they probably would at this point. Why not? Precedent is nothing. Who cares? Like there, there were other options for who could have taken this rank. There were four of them. There were four other Richie you could have put here. And yes, by the math and the typical tiebreaker rules, Nishiki Fuji did deserve to be ranked next. If you factor but in you anti gotta be demoted for a six and nine. Until this time. Exactly. As I was going to say, but the tiebreakers don't apply if a Rikshi with a record worse than seven and eight has not received any kind of demotion yet. Our other options included Tama Shoho and Shishi from Jurio. Both of those were deep Jurio Rikshi. And with other Makuuchi to Rikshi to choose from, I'm fine ignoring them for this conversation. But then there was Onosho, who went 0 and 15 from Maegashira 5. He could have dropped 12 ranks, just like, let me check my notes. Takayasu did this exact <laughs> two, Basho. Two ranks ago. <laughs> and then there was also Chio Shoma, who went 5 and 10 from Maegashira, from Maegashira 15. He could have dropped two ranks, just like, let me check my notes again. Nishikigi and Takura Fuji already did on this Bonske. I, or, or hear me out. He could have dropped zero ranks like 
let me check my notes. <laughs> Hokuto Fuji did on this very Bonske. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> So I, I appreciate that this is the thing I that cannot, finally I cannot broke. hold it in. This is the I one cannot. that finally broke Ryan's PG-13 filter yeah. of like maybe nope. one F-bomb per episode. Nope. Nope. <laughs> so I, I get I get <laughs> that historically Oh No Show and Chio Shoma had records that should be auto demotions to Jurio. We you knew who else had a record that should have been the most automatic of all automatic Jurio demotions. Nisi I have a guess. Fucking Fuji. Oh, that's yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> God, this is wow. I uh, yeah, this certainly certainly no no haunting going on whatsoever. Yeah. Well, how, how does this feel compared to the beginning of the episode where we were talking about how great you were by being the best Bonske picker? <laughs> quick pose for picture yeah <laughs> i'm not done yet jake let me let me get this off my chest okay so <laughs> okay so we have nishiki fuji oh no show chio shoma if all three of those guys have records that deserve demotion then just throw shishi a bone and promote him to the top division he went 11 and 4 from jurio 10 granted a ranking that doesn't deserve promotion to the top division but neither did Hira de Umi when he was promoted to the top division following a 10 and 5 record from Jurio 8 back in Aki of 2022. Both mm -hmm. Shishi and Hira de Umi deserve to be ranked Jurio 3 on the next Bonske. Hira de Umi ended up in the Makauchi division. And hey, do you want to know a little secret Bonske committee? Back in Aki of 2022 when Hira de Umi was promoted to the top division after deserving to be ranked Jurio 3? Do you want to guess the record of the bottom ranked Makauchi that he was? placed ahead of was do you want six and nine would it be of any relevance of you to know that shiomaru went six and nine from my 17 <laughs> west and then was demoted straight to fucking jurio like he deserved because that's what you fucking get when you go six and nine you get demoted <laughs> that's how it works those are the that's rules how it works <laughs> god that's oh yeah i was it, so it... mad when i found that like i i was Looking like I just remembered in the back of my head, like, oh yeah, Hito do Umi, like he got promoted to the top division after like being a deep Jurio guy. And then sure. I just happened to look and I'm like, there's no fucking way that a six and nine Rikshi <laughs> was the bottom ranked <laughs> guy in the top division and Hito do Umi went ahead of them. There's no way. And uh, lo and behold. That that would be a very complicated query to make on Sumo DB to find you'd probably have to go through a lot of iterations to like find yeah. that by searching. But just by remembering, oh, yeah, he got promoted from deep in Jurio. And then, oh, my God, another one of the, <laughs> the yeah. exact thing. Yep. So all of the other <laughs> options for Maegashira 17 East are going to be co-snub of the Bonske candidates. Uh, Onosho, Chiyoshoma, Shishi, and Tama Shoho. They're just all lumped together in one, one big candidacy for a snub of the Bonske. And, of course, Nishiki Fuji is also our luck of the Bonske candidate. Uh, congratulations to Nishiki Fuji on that. Hooray! And, you know, it, it's also very weird that on our last Bonske recap, we were talking about six and nine Rikshi keeping their same rank in the past. Like somebody, uh, uh, we had a YouTube comment from old Brutus that mentioned, uh, Tochi no Nada kept his rank in 2011 following a six and nine record. Cause I think I'd said six and nine Rikshi have to drop or something similar to that. And so he looked it up and found, Oh, back in 2011. Well, we had talked about, well, that was because that was after the match fixing scandal. There were so many Rikshi around him in the bonds K that were forced to retire. And they're kind of their hands were tied and they just kept them in the same spot. You could even look to Ichi Yamamoto back in 2022, I think it was. Started a Basho six and three, got pulled out due to COVID. And so he ended up mm. with effective six and nine record. They were freezing the ranks of Rikshi that were pulled out due to COVID if they had not yet achieved a Kachi Koshi or Make Koshi by the time that they uh, were pulled out. And so he had his record frozen. But before that, you have to go back to the 1960s. And I think it was like one in 67, one in 62, where a six and nine record uh, kept their previous rank. And it's it's just so weird that we were talking about that last Basho mm -hmm. for it to come up this time. And, and it happened to Rikshi and both of them not and, and neither of them are for a good reason either. No, like I, like obviously like that is obviously the point that makes it so weird. But like 
the fact that you do something that hasn't been done in 60 years just for the hell of it like it makes it makes no sense that's so stupid sorry i just changed nishiki fuji's color on the on the youtube video just realized he should have been green because he went higher oh because he's higher than you expected got it yeah Yeah, okay okay so (laughs) breathe do you need do you need some water you doing okay (laughs) i'm good i'm good We're, we're about to talk about how great i am again so all right all right bring um, her home we had three rikshi brought to the top division from jurio those being onokatsu shirokuma and kito nawaka which means we had to send three down to jurio those being onosho asanoyama chiyoshoma and unbelievably somehow not nishiki fuji <laughs> so how did i do on this bonds game? obviously you know I won this one. I got 32 bullseyes out of a possible 42. So that is 71% bullseye rate. My previous best on a Bonds K prediction was 76. So I've gotten more bullseyes on a Bonds K before, but somebody on that one did even better than I had. I got an additional degree of difficulty Bonds K. Yeah, I got an additional two at the correct rank, but on the wrong side. So I had 34 total Rikshi at the correct rank for a rate of 81%. Uh, and so guess the Bonske results in standing. I finished first out of 206 for a Sorry, 50- finished what? That is first place for first your place? What number? best Bonske guy. Number one. First time winning guess the Bonske in over five years of attempting this. I honestly, I'm satisfied with my guess the bonds K journey at this point. I've won <laughs> first place. I've been number one overall means by no means. Does that mean I'm going to stop? But sure. like I, you're, I, you're no longer I, chasing. You're being I'm not chased. chasing anything yeah. anymore. Like there's nothing in guess the bonds K that I haven't achieved at this point. All I can do is just try to be number one as long as possible and rack up the, the you show there. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I'm, very happy to finally have that off my back and finally get this win. It is it is a weight off my shoulders that I can feel a little bit less pressure every time I go into predicting a bonds. I I got that win. I'm happy yeah. it's behind me. And and as I mentioned, I jumped up from fourth overall. I'm back up to number one overall for the fourth Basho out of the past six. Um, I mean, we've since we got that 91st placement back in May and I said I've got to I've got to tighten up the ship. I've got to do better. We've gotten an 8th place and this first place. Uh we've only been increasing our overall score. So we're making it hard for me to keep replacing my past scores with better ones. Like this first place replaced a fifth place finish. I didn't think I was going to be able to top what I had done last year at this yeah. time. And your, we, your previous best. I mean, you'd done fifth place two times, right? And that was the best you'd ever done. Yeah. So for Kyushu, I've got to uh, beat a fifth place again if I want to increase increase my score once again. So mm-hmm. it's going to be it's going to be tough to do it. But if anybody can, why not me? Yeah. So, so just uh, just a recap, though, that 91st won't drop off for a little while. Yeah. So the, the Kyushu your Kyushu score will replace a fifth place finish, but then you do have an opportunity to improve because uh, the next January contest will replace a 51st place, another mm-hmm. another underperformance compared to your normal. Right. Um, so yeah, I think the first half of 2025 is is a, a very, very potentially strong stretch for you. Yeah, if I can keep it going, if, I mean... If I can just keep these top 10 finishes churning out, ain't nobody going to beat me. Yeah, no kidding. All right. My worst guess on this prediction, up to interpretation, whether it's Nishiki Fuji or or Wakataka Kage. Um, Wakataka Kage missed by four total overall spots, uh, two total ranks. Um, so numerically, Wakataka Kage would be my worst guess. But Nishiki Fuji, I, this might be the first time that... I had the correct number of Jurio demotees, but not the right Rikshi going down. Oh, sure. I don't know if we've ever had that situation before. So yeah, because usually it's like these we're not two debating. guys are for sure going down, and these two are for sure coming up, and then there's another potential exchange that might or might not happen, right? Yeah, or something yeah, like that. It, it's usually not like okay, like somebody from the top division is 
fighting for this rank and we're just not worried about any other Juria Rikshi. It's just going to be one Makauchi Rikshi and who knows who it's going to be to take that final spot. That's just not not a situation that really rises up all too often, except for except for this time. Uh, Should have been Shishi. That's my official position. If, if if you were doing the Bonds K, that's who you would have put in that spot. I kept oh no show, but I oh, feel yeah, like I feel like did. the yeah, <laughs> I feel like the Bonds K committee was making a point with oh no show and stating like if you go zero and fifteen, you're outside of the joy, you're out of there. Chio Shoma, you went, but I can't even say that because Chio Shoma went five and ten from my Gashira fifteen. It's like that's a that's record that better. deserves to yeah, that's yeah. a re- it's not they deserve to be the same rank, mm-hmm. um, but that's a record that deserves to go down Juria. So you've got to go, and it should. If they were setting that precedent with Ono oh, Show that Owen 15's got to go, I don't know how you can look yourself in the mirror and also say a six and nine record from the bottom Maka Uchi rank also doesn't equally deserve to go down. And in that yeah. case, you just bring up the Jurio guy. I don't care if he was Jurio 10. He went 11 and four. He deserves the same rank as these other guys. Bring him up. You did it with Hida yeah. Duumi, and look how good he's been doing since he's been in the top division. It's just so stupid and asinine. Seriously, a slight over promotion or a slight under demotion could have solved both of these stupid six and nines yeah. and would have made way more infinitely more sense. Yeah. And I and I, I kind of ask myself, like, why am I so worked up about this? Because I've already <laughs> said, like, I'm not going to let this. This isn't going to affect how I predict Bond's case in the future. Never again am I going to look at, oh, maybe they keep the six and nine guy like. I, I don't think that's going to happen in the future. So I, I can't fully explain why I'm so angry. It's like, what what does it really matter uh, in the grand scheme of things? But I am angry and I am upset. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fully put into words why at this point, but I am. Uh, I think it's it's less an issue of you need to work out your thoughts and more an issue of you need to like let your heart rate get down yeah. uh, <laughs> so that you can properly... Uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's the real issue. Mm-hmm. All right, looking at some overall stats on this Bonske, our biggest jumps up the Bonske: Shido Kuma rising nine ranks, and then we had Wakataka Kage rising seven ranks, and then Shodai, Churanumi, and Endo all rose six ranks. Our biggest drops down the Bonske: Onosho dropping thirteen ranks, and Takeyasu dropping twelve ranks. We have four Rikshi that will be at their career high ranking: Oho, Churanumi, Roga, and Bushozan, and two additional Rikshi that will be making their Makuuchi debut. Those are Ono. Katsu and Shido Kuma. Uh, we've got some snub of the Bonske candidates. We've got Ono Katsu, and then we have the I don't know what the right word for a group of four is. I love the word triumvirate, but there's four, and I don't think quadumvirate is a word. It's um, certainly not a good word. <laughs> but we've got the group of four quartet. that were all quartet. Perfect. We got the quartet of Onosho, Chiyoshoma, Tama Shoho, and Shishi, who were all snubbed in favor of keeping Nishiki Fuji in the bottom Makauchi rank. So, Jake, who who are you selecting as the snub between Onokatsu, who was snubbed in favor of Hokuto Fuji keeping his rank, or the quartet of Rikshi, who were snubbed in favor of keeping Nishiki Fuji at his previous rank? I hesitate to say the Nishiki Fuji situation. I think he got lucky more than the other guys got unlucky. Um, I think individually, none of them deserved this spot. Nishiki or Nishiki Fuji also didn't deserve this spot. But I, I think it's more, in my opinion, Onokatsu is kind of where I want to I want to go, just because like the he was the top ranked Jurio guy. Like mm-hmm. it, you don't have to hold him back for any anything else, you know. It, it just that one just feels stupid. Yeah. Um. And and he was pushed down two additional ranks by going behind Nishkigi and Duyuden as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. He deserved that. to be ahead of exactly. all of those guys. Yeah. Putting him at at, at Magishira thirteen East, where you put him, solves multiple issues in one go. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just like you predicted, Hokuto Fuji, even a half rank is still a demotion and that yeah. needed to happen. And just to, to snub Onokatsu for a incredibly stupid reason just makes it that much dumber. Yeah. And then luck of the bonds. K you could throw a Hokuto Fuji nomination in there. He's surely deserving of it, but mm-hmm. I've, 
I've just got to go with Nishiki Fuji on this. The fact that Hokuto Fuji also kept his rank at six and nine, which is unprecedented maneuver, but Nishiki Fuji somehow did it at Maegashira 17 East, the last Rikshi on the Bonske, and is able to stay in the top division for another Basho uh, because yeah. of this he, He's decision, like actively so. making more money this cycle yeah. because of this stupid thing. <laughs> easily Nishiki Fuji. Like you could look up at Maegashira five, Maegashira seven range. You, you got a couple of lucky guys there. You got a couple of stubs there. It pales sure. in comparison to what's happening at yes. the bottom of the bonds. Okay. <laughs> Those are like, I don't get it, but it's within the realm of normal. And then yes, this 13 East and 17 East are just nonsense. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that, 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 going to wrap up our recap of the <laughs> Aki Bonske coming up in just about a week's time. We're going to have the preview for the upcoming Aki Basha, which is coming faster than you think. It is going to be starting September 8th, 2024 after the Basho. Want to remind everybody, we will have our sixth annual popularity poll where you'll be able to Vote for your favorite Rikshi, your least favorite Rikshi. Tell us who you love, who you hate, and we're going to compile all the results and find out who the most popular and least popular Rikshi are in Sumo's top. And hey, Nishiki Fuji gets to be on the ballot because we always do it <laughs> for the 42 top division Rikshi. Nishiki Fuji gets to be included on this year's version since he is still in the top division. That That's why they did that. They had to get Nishiki Fuji in there. I guess. had to get him on the ballot for uh for for our popularity episode. Yep. Uh, anything else before the Basho starts, Jake? Yeah. Um, we are gonna have the World Championships, the Amateur Sumo World Championships, happening the same weekend that the Basho starts. They're taking place in Poland. Keep an eye on the World of Sumo YouTube channel. That's another English language sumo commentary channel that is, they've been around for a while and they're all over the place. And just by coincidence, uh, GSB has not really crossed their paths much. Um, but that's run by uh, Scott Finley out of uh, Clan Sumo in Scotland. Uh, big, uh, big tournament organizer over there the last couple of years. The, the Scottish Open has been a pretty gigantic amateur tournament in the last two years. But uh, World of Sumo uh, is the place to look for the World Championship uh, English language cover coverage. Um, and let's see, I think uh, before this one comes out, there should be an episode where I interview Jay out of San Antonio, Texas. That's the uh, men's heavyweight champion this year. And I think I will have one more interview with another wrestler coming out before Worlds, but I won't say who in case it has to get pushed. So... Yeah, lots of lots of amateur stuff going on uh, right before this Basho. And then as soon as that's over, there's a nice little break in amateur stuff so that everyone can recover <laughs> and we can get back into pro sumo for a couple weeks at least. All right. So if you enjoy this podcast, you can leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. If you're watching on YouTube, like, comment and subscribe to the Grand Sumo Breakdown YouTube channel. You can follow us on Twitter. Facebook, all of the social medias. Uh, if you want to send us any comments, questions, or corrections, you can send us an email at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com. Or if you want, you can send us a voicemail at 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward. Get at least a six and nine and we'll keep you keep around. It six and nine and you can keep moving forward. Or at least stop moving backwards. <laughs>